How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturdays with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. And we got a lot to talk about here today on the show. It's Friday. And you know what that means? That means it's a Friday show. And, of course, those are always a lot of fun. But we got a lot of uh, news to talk about going into the weekend here. Everything is a little more calm after uh, that weekend with the uh, the WWE Saudi show, the NXT show, Double or Nothing. No, uh, no big shows coming up this weekend other than Dominion, which we can talk about here. But we have updates on Braun Strowman, who is out of action. And now we know why he needs neck fusion surgery. We'll tell you about that. Matt Jackson needing a special license in order to superkick somebody with an exploding boot, which, uh, yeah, you probably would need a license for that now, wouldn't you? We got the ratings for Dynamite on Wednesday, which was up 10% with the fallout for the Double or Nothing show. Ted DiBiase said that he is dealing with health problems, including, quote, severe brain trauma. And then we've got the... The rookie class, the spring 2023 rookie class for uh, the WWE Performance Center. And as somebody messaged me yesterday, holy smokes, I hope they don't change these names. We got some names here, let me tell you. And they're all going to get their names changed. And we should have some sort of uh, some sort of running poll of, uh, you know, are there, are there new names going to be better or worse than their old names? So we'll go through all of those here today. We'll take your uh, text messages, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Dagan's begging me to open up the phones. We'll see. We'll see, Dagan. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Unlike Tony Khan, I did not announce that I have a big announcement today. But I have a big announcement today. And, uh, you know, when you, when you first hear this announcement, some of you are going to be very upset. And you're going to say, this is not a good announcement. This is a terrible announcement. I don't like this. I don't like you, Brian. Well, you know what? Here's the deal, everybody. I am not here to be liked by everybody. Because the fact of the matter is, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but you can't be liked by everybody. It is impossible. There's always going to be somebody that does not like you. There are people that don't like Santa Claus. Are you aware of that? So here's the deal, everybody. Have you ever been on this YouTube chat during this show? Well, you know who doesn't go on the YouTube chat during the show is me. Because it's a cesspool. And, uh, and to cut to the chase, the announcement is that uh, this is the final Wrestling Observer Live that you are going to be able to watch for free. It ends today. We tried an experiment about six months ago, and, uh, and it didn't work out. And so we are ending the experiment. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if you want to listen to Wrestling Observer Live which airs for free on Sports Byline USA, well, then you can listen on Sports Byline USA for free. But if you would like to watch the show every day live, if you would like to chat, well, you have to pay. Because at the end of the day, it is not about having everybody like me. Oh, you're giving me this, you're giving me that. I have a loyalty to the subscribers. As does Mike and everybody else that works here. And, uh, you know, this experiment that we did, the idea was, well, you know, let's try this out. Let's see how it goes. Let's get some, uh, you know, all this or that. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of, uh, it actually caused way more problems than, than it solved. And I'm sick of dealing with these problems. And uh, not only that, you know, I have a loyalty to these subscribers, to the people who pay for content. And I did have people that asked me, what am I paying for? Like, there's so much out there for free. And you know what? You're right. And we tried something to see how it went. 
And, uh, and at the end of the day, it works out much better. If you want to watch the show, if you want to listen to the podcast, if you want to know what's going on, well, you have to subscribe. And so, you know, there are two options for Observer Live. You, If you would like to stay on YouTube, that's fine. Video.f4wonline.com. And uh, for Twitch, you must be a Twitch homie. You have to sign up if you want to watch it live. And uh, as I mentioned a thousand times, the benefit to being a, a Twitch homie, a Twitch subscriber, is that if you have Amazon Prime, and a ton of people have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. It costs you nothing. You go to sign up, you hit subscribe, and then it says link Amazon Prime account. You put your Amazon Prime stuff in there, and, uh, and you get a free Twitch subscription every month. You can watch this show free forever if you want to using your Amazon Prime account. And if you don't, you can you know sign up for Twitch, which is not that expensive, or you can sign up for YouTube. Those are the options. There are a lot of other benefits to this, okay? Number one, it is benefiting the people that are already paying. Because you know what sucks is when you want to watch this show and there's a bunch of idiots in there who aren't paying that are causing problems. And my God, this YouTube chat is just the bottom. The bottom of the barrel. And uh, who would want to go in there? I don't. If I don't want to go in there, why is anybody else going to want to go in there? So you ever been on the chat when it's only people who subscribe? Miles better. You ever gone onto the chat here, uh, this this uh, Twitch chat, when it's subscriber only? Miles better. And you know what? DJ, for example, here is a moderator. Well, you know how much harder it is to moderate a free chat than a paid chat? If you want to pay to go onto the Twitch chat and troll, like, I'll take your money, but he'll also boot you. So don't bother. Now, if you are paying, you go on there, you enjoy the chat. DJ has to do a lot less work because there's not a bunch of idiots that are on there for free causing trouble. And, uh, and away you go. So uh, this is going to be... See, this is the thing. If you're not a subscriber, you're going to hate a lot of these changes. But if you are a subscriber, and my loyalty is to the subscribers, you are going to have a much better experience. So that's it. That's that's the announcement. And, uh, and you know, we're making some changes to the YouTube channel as well because we also had people complain. It's like, you know, I, I uh, you and Dave talked about this or that, and, you know, before it was even uploaded, it was free on YouTube. Yes, that's a problem, okay? Yeah, sure, it helped us get my plaque, but what good did that do me? A whale stole it. So, you know, I didn't even get that. So, you know, there's going to be an embargo. If you want to know what Dave and I think about the CM Punk debut, yeah, you can watch it on YouTube five days later. But you're not going to be able to watch it immediately. So if you are a subscriber, you know, my loyalty is to you, as is it is to Mike as well, you know. And if you will listen to the Big Audio Nightmare, paywalled. They're all going back behind the paywall again. Because Mike is a loyal soldier of the Empire. Right, Mike? Maybe even, you might have even been, uh, what do they call up past the soul? You might be a colonel now. Mm. Colonel Sempe. Okay? Colonel Sempe is a loyal foot soldier of the Empire. Why is this stuff being given away for free? Yeah. It's not valueless. There's a value to it. Damn right. So if you want to listen to this damn big audio nightmare, you want yeah. to hear about stardom and Maki Ito mm -hmm. and uh, Starlight Kid and stardom, yeah. then you got to yeah. pay for it. What do you think this is, a charity? So that's the announcement. Starts Monday. So uh, I'm going to have a heck of a show for you free today for the last one because it's Friday. But after that, Monday, everything changes for the better for all of our loyal subscribers. Some of you who have been here since 2005. You know how fun it is to go on the board, and every now and then you see some random post, and it starts with PP- and then there's a username? <laughs> that's somebody who signed up on day one mm -hmm. they have been here since 2005 so thank you to pp dash rk74n yeah i'm one of those people that's been here since day one you think you could have told me about this before the show i did i told you during the break I wonder how it's going on that YouTube chat right now. Should I click that button and find out what's going on? Yeah, you might as well. It's Friday. Let's do probably, this. Probably a it's bad idea, one. huh? Nah, hell with them. Yeah, I can't even See. find it anyway. Eh, who cares? Nerds. 
don't know. There's actually good people in the YouTube chat, but now, you yeah. know, hopefully it'll only be the... Uh... <laughs> oh, First thing I see, all the crying in here, LOL. These trolls are mad, LOL. <laughs> well, you know what, bro? Listen, you guys seen the stock market today? Boom. Bear market or bull, whichever it is. Bull. It did really well today. The bear's gone. That's all the headlines I saw. So uh, pony up. And you know what's funny, too? You know what's funny? What's that? Is, um, I don't know if you guys, you know, some of you are subscribers and some aren't. But for those of you that aren't, like, do you know how much better it is as a subscriber than as a, a freeloader in there? Just in with all of these nerds and you're all fighting and everybody hates each other. And it just sucks. It's so much better to be a subscriber. Because now, you know, what it is is what it used to be, which is you are you are a, you know, someone special. <laughs> you're not just a plebe. You're not just a plebeian. You're somebody special. And you're part of something special with a bunch of other special people. And you can all enjoy yourselves and not have to deal with the, uh, you know, what, what would be the, the rabble? Is that the proper word? Ra rabble, I guess, yes. could be one way you could describe it. The gentry, as they say in the UK. Yeah, you will be royalty if you sign up. So sign up now and enjoy it with all the rest of the people that are, uh, you know, elite. And then uh, away we go. I should Don't have said elite. Now, now it's going to be all over the internet. Oh, see, oh, Brian loves go. the elite. Well, it's Sorry, I can't stopped. use a word. Your your paycheck stopped coming in from Tony, so that's what's causing all of this. Uh, that domino yeah. fell, and now we got to put everything behind the paywall again. Oh, well. Hey, back in a moment with all the news and more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. A lot of questions in the chat. I'll answer two before I get going. Dagan want to know if you guys are going to be called geeks less. Well, yeah, of course, because we're going to get rid of a bunch of the geeks. Subscribers are not generally geeks, you know. Well, if you go into free chat, it's like 80% or 90% are geeks. But in terms, it's like the 80-20 rule. When it's free, 80% are geeks, 20% are not. For paid, 20% are geeks and 80% are not. And it's already better for you. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be it'll be way better. And then uh, I think somebody asked about, uh, yeah, nothing changes for the YouTube subscription. Like Observer Live will still go up there with no commercials on, uh, on YouTube. So, uh... Yeah. Any more questions, I'll be happy to answer. Bros? And it, should right. be no it should be noted with this show, there is a over-the-air replay that Sports Byline runs at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific as well, too, for yeah. those people. Listen who, on Byline. Absolutely. Yeah. Should always consider that an option. Of course. This will help Byline as well. Damn right. Their app is going to crash Monday. <laughs> well. Braun Strowman on the road to recovery, undergoing fusion surgery on his cervical spine. Revealed in an Instagram post Friday, he underwent level one fusion surgery on his C4 and C5. The 39-year-old wrote, it was very scary to find out he needed this surgery. He thanked WWE for being there every step of the way, getting him the best care possible. He says, road to recovery starts now. Level one fusion, C4, C5, in the great hands of Dr. Cordover at Andrew Sports Medicine. Great experience considering. Thank you to WWE for always taking the utmost care of us. Scary to find out. I assure you, in the words of the Terminator, I'll be back. Thank you all in advance for the well wishes. So all the best to Ron Strowman, Adam Scher, and uh, no word on what happened. And if you remember, it was not that long ago that they had that uh, that match where he had that ridiculous spot, which, uh, you know, of course, Tom and I laughed about it before we knew what it was, which, by the way, went up immediately on Twitter, and I got nothing but blowback. <laughs> So anyway, um, he uh, he had that, and then, you know, they told us he had a concussion. And then, like, a week later, he was back in the ring, and I think that was his last match. So I don't know if maybe, you know, whatever happened that gave him the concussion also injured his neck, or if, you know, this was just wear and tear over a career. But one way or the other, it sucks. All the best to him, and hope he is back very soon. Absolutely. And because this last, let me tell you something about Strowman. People think they don't yeah. like Strowman. Because maybe I've called him a big dummy once or twice. But uh, he was so miles better this last run when he came back. And I don't know what it was. It was just like he got newly motivated. But, I mean, he his promos, his work, 
He was by far the best giant that they had by miles. And uh, and it's too bad that now he's down because uh, that was the best run of his career by far. It was. He looked like he had shaved off a little bit of weight and he was in there with Ricochet. And, you know, I'm sure getting released, you know, was a motivating factor when the call came to come back that you want to take as much advantage of this as possible. But a little bit, you know, to the side of that, James Andrews, if he's not, should be in every sports hall of fame everywhere he should make it into the wwe hall of fame yes it's not his hands that are doing the surgeries for the most part on these folks now that are getting them but that orthopedic center in alabama has been an absolute godsend for every single athlete not the least of which have been professional wrestlers and however that started whether it started with turner and that you know assimilation of those guys going over there i'm not exactly sure but Thankfully, this has been the case where they have had such an open door and been willing to work with WWE and all of these promotions to get these people fixed up. Matt Jackson had to obtain a special license in order to deliver an exploding superkick to John Moxley. Performed the move during the Anarchy in the Arena match, which Dave, by the way, you want to know what he gave that match? Read the Observer! So anyway... Dave Meltzer reported today's Observer he was required to get a fire performer's license from the state of Nevada. <laughs> I get it. I, get I it. could talk about this for years. <laughs> so hold on a second. What? What is a fire performer? Is someone who, like juggles, you know, fiery gimmicks or whatever? Yeah, remember when Samojo had his people out there and they were doing the fire dance and all that sort of stuff? That sort of thing. Okay. All yeah. right. So I go to Vegas. Yeah. I want to get a license to uh, dance with fire. So, I, like, they're going to want to see me, you know, like, do whatever, right? Yeah. See me handle it or – or the point of this is Nobody Matt Jackson isn't me. a fire performer. He's a wrestler who wanted to do a spot with fire. And so you're telling me it's that easy to just get a fire performer's license? Sure. Like, hey, throw a super kick, buddy. All right, you can kick. We'll let you blow up someone's face with a uh, firecracker. It seems like – what? This well, seems like I'm, something you should have to work for like a period of years and display competency in the well, art of working with fire. How many times are you going to do the, where do you practice doing the firework from the boot so you can put together a well, highlight exactly. to show the folks? I mean, <laughs> what the heck? I mean, nobody got hurt. I'm not saying that, you know, he shouldn't have done it. He's done many super kicks in his life. But it just seems like it's pretty easy to get. My point is, it shouldn't be easy to get a fire performer's license. It seems like that should be hard. Maybe there's levels. You know, if you're actually, like, you know, throwing things up in the air, I don't know. It just seems like, you know, it's sure it's a money grab from the state of Nevada there. But in case the, you know, firework goes off and then, you know, kills a bunch of people, I'm sure they'd like to know and go back and see, you know, who approved this and all that other stuff. So I don't have really any problem with them dotting I's and crossing T's in this situation. So what's, uh, you know, what about Jericho when he throws his fireball? Does he need a license? Or does he just not throw fireballs in Vegas? No, he needs to be slapped for doing that. With, and everybody needs to be slapped for doing that because he does it too much now. It's ridiculous that he can just burn anybody he wants and then there's no follow-up to it whatsoever. It's just kind of ridiculous at this point. Plus, we all know it's flash paper and that stuff's expensive. It is? It used to be. When you didn't have any money and you were trying to do it to throw fire? Yeah. I remember that. Try something here. <laughs> What's that? Go on Amazon.com. Okay. Because I I uh, I'm a Prime subscriber. That's, ah. That's actually that's actually how I get my own Twitch. I'm not kidding. Flash, paper. Flash. This is the first thing that comes up. Flash paper magic sheets fire. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Truth in advertising. Uh. 50, 20 centimeter, uh, 8.99. Is it that low now? Those well, magic shops. What are you, poor? About 25 years ago, back in the day, trying to find that. So one, you actually had to go find it, and you had to find a magician shop and somebody that had those types of gimmicks there. Although the good part about finding those types of gimmick stores is they usually had a room that had like brass knuckles and other you know unique items in there, not for like weapon reuse, just for show. I am looking at a thing right now on Amazon. 
that is 1999, and it is in a silver baggie, and the label says, and I quote, "Ball of Fire gimmick." Not a lie. That's the gimmick. You can get a you can get a, a dual flash gun. It'll shoot two fireballs for twenty dollars. Twenty? That's it? Yeah. Twenty bucks for a dual shooter. Huh. So yeah, I, I don't know what your gimmick is, brother. It was twenty five years ago too. I got I got to step into the two thousand and twenty threes here. Wednesday's episode Damn, of Dynamite. It's actually a lot longer ago than that. It was like thirty something years ago. Yeah, because you're old. Yeah, I am. Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, up 10% from last week. Best audience for the show since March 22. 18 to 49, 0.29. 923,000 viewers. It did, uh, it was down, it was up 10% in viewers and down 10% in the demo, which is kind of weird. Um, tied for the third highest rating in 18 to 49. Compared to the same week in 2022. Overall audience down 3.9%, 18 to 49 down 27.5%. So, uh, yeah, WWE year over year is up in, uh, you know, ratings and demo, and AW is uh, generally down. But we're going to see what happens as uh, Collision debuts, and uh, we head into the summer with a lot of very big shows. I wonder what the big show was on Wednesday, because I'm obviously out of the loop on this. I don't think that there was any basketball on. But when you look at the well, the last showbiz 90, chart is delayed. So when you look at the last 90 days of the uh, WrestleNomics put out there, when you look at the last 90 days of the average viewership, I mean, the 18 to 49 was dead on to what they've always, you know, for the most part done. And the rating was, you know, significantly up from what it's been, you know, probably due to the lack of competition. It's just, okay, where did the 18 to 49s go? Was there a special Vanderpump Rules, you know, post-show or something like that that took place that siphoned some people? I don't know. Well, let's see. This says uh, no major sports competition. So there is that. Mm. I don't know what else. Ted DiBiase says he's dealing with health problems. 69-year-old revealed on his Everybody's Got a Pod podcast. Don't they? Oh, my Doctors God. Doctors told they. him he has, quote, severe brain trauma. DiBiase said, I'm dealing with this. It's legit. I don't have Alzheimer's, don't have dementia. But they said, Ted, you have something. We just simply call it severe brain trauma. I said, really? I only wrestled for maybe almost 20 years, so I'm surprised. I'm not surprised I have a little brain trauma. Well, it what if what it affects is my memory. They said it'll be easier for you to remember something you did 40 or 50 years ago, but the short-term memory, some of the stuff right now, it's bits and pieces. Mm. So uh, one of 38 hey, so people being sued by the Mississippi Department of Health and Human Services. Yeah. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Wow, man. Yeah. See, there's fallout to these things, boss. Yeah, Nevada Talk Network, very angry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Nevada Talk Network. But, hey, you know, they can subscribe to hear the voice of reason, Mike Sempervivi. Well, here's the thing. I was looking at some program changes, but after Brian Alvarez went on a rant today about freeloaders, I just took Wrestling Observer Live out of consideration. Well, if you're a program director, we're not speaking about over-the-air freeloaders. We love those freeloaders, like our friends at the Mightier 1090 and such. So if you are a program director looking to switch some things up, we'd be glad to come on and talk to your freeloaders. This is directed to the YouTube folks. You yeah, know we're talking you about video, not audio. Of course, the show is always going to be free on audio. It's on Sports Byline. But Damn it does right. not need to be free on YouTube with that uh, chat. I hear nothing, nothing but negatives about the YouTube chat. Have you gotten any nasty texts from uh, Matt Farmer or maybe Rena Yamashita herself for saying there's nothing going on this weekend? I'll and be at Defy. A big, big Defy show going yeah. on. You got Tournament of Survival Nick, 8 Nick place. Wayne and, uh, and Kenta. Yeah. I'll be there for that one, brother. That one's going to be good. Where is Swerve right now? Somebody needs to get a GPS on Swerve right this second. Make sure that boy's going to be okay. All right. WWE Performance Center rookie class. By the way, if you want text, we got time for a bunch of questions today. 425-780-7566. 
That is 425-780-7566. Oh, man, can you imagine a spot where you're front row right there and, and Nick is, is right there talking to you, and out of nowhere, here comes Swerve, ready to kill Nick Wayne finally, just to lay him out for good so he never even makes it to AEW, and he misses or Nick moves out of the way, and he lands that shot in on you. On me? Oh, man. All right, here's the, the rookie class for 2023. One can dream. Ezekiel Balligan, 25 years old, 6'6", 238, born in Nigeria, former University of North Florida basketball player. Add on the honor roll. Vlad Pavlenko, he will not have a better name, whatever they give him. 26, former Iowa State University track and field athlete, three-time All-American. Hunter Smallback, which is the exact... Opposite of Triple H, 23 years old, although he is 6'4 and 227. I don't know if you guys have noticed anything about these signees as I read them. Former defensive end. Coy Wanner, 24, 6'3, 247 pounds. Former tight end, University of Wisconsin. To me, if your mama named you Coy, you should never have your name changed to anything because I bet you went through some stuff growing up. On... Dres Hughes Murray, 25, 6'2", 247, former linebacker, signed with the Rams. Hey, remember undrafted that 6'2 free thing agent. we talked about a long time ago? That people told me we were wrong about? Mm-hmm. Kevin Robertson, 6'2", 290, former defensive lineman, Temple University. Melanie Burz... Let's see if I can do this. Brezinski, probably screwed that up. They did not mention height and weight. She is uh, 22 years old, University of Tampa alumni, bodybuilder, CrossFit athlete, karate black belt. We have got uh, Tylin Register. You notice with the women, they will announce a height if they're tall. She's 5'6", which in WWE is a very tall woman because I think Charlotte's 5'8", and she looks like Andre the Giant in there compared to some of the other women. Charlotte's only, there's no way. She's only 5'8". I'm I'm 5'8", maybe, wow. maybe 5'9". Dude, Zelina's like, they say she's 5 feet, but I don't think so. No way. She's in no. the fours. <laughs> and uh, I think Alexa's maybe 5'2". I mean, you know, Becky's probably 5'3 or 5'4". I mean, if you go to a WWE show and you like sit in the front row, I mean, the women come out and they are... Tiny. So, uh, Tylin. Well, how tall is Leah Hale? She fits into that. Leah way. Hale? She's probably Leah three, Hale, four, it. I think. Tylin, Tylin Register, 5'6", former Jacksonville State University track and field athlete, and Alexis Gray, 25. When, when they only have the age, that means they're also short. Alexis Gray is 25, former Southern University sprinter born in the Bahamas. They love track and field. That's their new thing now. Well, it's not their new thing. They've been doing it for a while. Football players are always going to be of value to them. But remember, they were kind of going after both men's and women's basketball players for a while. Then they were heavy on the CrossFit thing. And I know they still like the CrossFit thing, but it looks like they, when they're pulling a lot of these kids out of college and the NILs and all that stuff, it is all track and field right now, and it is all football. All righty. Let's, uh, let's do some of these uh, text messages. 425-780-7566. Actually, should also mention that uh, we got the lineup for Dominion coming up this weekend for New Japan. And uh, we got a lot of big matches. Apparently, the official name of the show is Dominion June 4th in Osaka, Joe Hall. That's the name of the show. That's one of the more normal names when you go to pearllove.com and, and look at some of the ones that are there. It's ridiculous. Some of the stardom shows, we say, hey, it's a stardom show. No, it's like a 20-sentence you know, title for that show. We've got Sonata and Yoda Suji for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. Sonata and Yota Suji. That's very, IWGP title. very interesting. Yes, sure is. Hey, listen, I've been begging for something different on top. Boy, did I get it. Boy, did I get it. Well, you got it with Sonata. The big question to me is, 
look, it's like Watto and Titan worked. And Lucha Blog wrote about this, you know, when it comes to Obari. And it comes, we've talked about their money. They It was clear when they didn't sign Trinity. And there's been all that talk that's come out about all of the financial suffering that they took during the pandemic, including Obari saying it was only going to be a couple months. He was counting them down on his hand where they would have actually had to shutter things for a while. And that thankfully didn't happen, but... You know, again, this I look at what's happening in stardom with, with getting to Tam and Mayu seemingly early. I look at see what they're doing when it comes to a lot of the natives that they have, bringing Yodi Suji back and needing it to hit. You know, this is this is a crucial time for them when it comes to kind of building things back up, and they do need things to hit. And we've got uh, Hiromu and the winner of the Super Juniors, Master Watto, for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title, which I would advocate for Master Watto winning. And also getting a different gimmick. Well, that's... Um, Nobody's both, gimmick should be a master when they're like in their early 20s. You aren't a master of anything, brother. Come on. That's something you get with age and gray hair. Know. There are some things that some people become, you know, experts on in mastering at the age of about 13 or so. I'm going to come up with a new name for Master Wado. We have uh, Okada, Ishii, and Tanahashi versus Moxley, Claudio, and Shota Umino for the six-man tag team titles, which could be a title change. Did you ever Would see not... the toy with Richard Pryor? Surprised me in the least. You ever see that movie? No. You never did? No. I got his name. Don't worry. We've got uh, Dave Finley and El Fantasmo for the Never Openweight title. We've got Goto and Yoshihashi versus Evil and Yujiro and the Great Okan and Aaron Hanare for the vacant IWGP and... Strong open weight tag team titles. So the winners will be uh, working a lot in America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's New Japan strong, brah. They got to come over. Well, yeah, I guess. We have the Let's Intergalactic see. Jet Setters, Kushida and Kevin Knight versus uh, whatever it's catch 20. Nobody calls them that. Yeah. <laughs> Francesco Akira and TJP for the junior tag titles. We have Zach Sabre Jr. versus Jeff Cobb for the TV title. That could be a title change. Mm. It's possible. I'd like it. Look, if that's the case, then you look at ROH's TV last night where Zach Sabre Jr. and Samoa Joe John back and forth at each other. I would love to see Jeff Cobb involved in that mix. And frankly, I wouldn't mind seeing the United Empire get those tag titles back with Hanare and Okan and get that thing built back up again. And we have got uh, just five guys. With the uh, the single, the double, the triple stack, Taichi Duki, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Takamichinoku against Naito Doki. Shingo. It's Duki. Come on. If you don't like that, you know what? You should come up with a different name. Let's be honest. Bushi and Titan, which is how you pronounce it, because I am Mexican. In fact, I found out that since my father was born in Mexico, I technically am a citizen of Mexico. Really? Yes. Yes. They work that gimmick like Israel? As long as you're you're Jewish, you got a spot or something like that? Uh, I don't know this how it true? works, but I, I huh. found that out the other day. So when you wrestle in Arena Mexico? Never. Are you going to go to Arena Mexico for the very first Fantastica Mania that no. will be taking place there? Perhaps no? someday I will go to uh You don't Arena want to be Mexico. Rocky second? And then we've got uh, Lance Archer, Will Ospreay. The winner will get a shot at the IWGP United States Heavyweight title held by Kenny Omega. That's got it. a prediction? Will Ospreay. How fast? How much Although, drama is You know, to be honest, this? to be honest, to be honest, I mean, if they do want to do Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay at uh, the Wembley show, which is over two months away, I mean, Lance Archer could win this, and you just do Kenny Omega, Lance Archer at Forbidden Door. Kenny Omega gets a big win. Will Ospreay shows up. I want you and Wembley. Very easily you could do that. But I don't know what they're going to do. I, th I still think, because you don't have to have one draw or something where everything is even. Kenny Omega getting a victory over Will Ospreay, and Ospreay having to, again, fight off his demons, fight off the fact that, you know what, I have changed, my body's changed, bring in the real-life stuff, bring in the real-life problems that he's had and build them into, I don't know if I can beat Kenny Omega now. And everybody wants to see this match at Wembley. I don't know. And then you go ahead and build it that way where he gets a big victory. I don't know. Uh, to me, three matches between them is the way to go rather than 
have something happen where you leave a space for a long time because again it's bigger in the new japan world than it's going to be in the aew world so i think the more you can keep that kind of thing swirling around you know it's going to be better for everybody listen kenny omega and will osprey wembley stadium seventy thousand people is there a bigger match in the life of will osprey no no okay we already know that Will Ospreay's shoulder is messed up. So, is it not possible that Will Ospreay loses here and takes a couple of months to get closer to 100%? So when you do that match, if you do that match in Wembley, you're as close to 100% as you can be for the biggest match of your entire life? I think that's possible. I'd do it! Well, and him going on a run leading into that show of like, okay, you did lose to Archer. Why do you deserve this shot? He's on AEW TV for like a month leading into it, just killing dudes, as well as doing what he needs to do in Japan, you know, to build up. You know, I think that would be great because, I mean, I, I'm assuming Osprey is going to be on TV a lot in the lead into on AEW TV, a lot in the lead into that show. One would assume at least person says you tell that trader to take off the atl colors they sign lamar what you heard me lamar jackson he ain't in atlanta we still got desmond ritter man do you think wrestlers should be classified as actors they read scripts they do more acting than wrestling they can also join the acting guild for better rights what do you think well i mean some it's not up to WWE or AEW to classify them as as actors. If if they don't want if to, SAG <laughs> wants to classify them as actors, then then they can, and they do for those that actually act in films. But uh, after you put in enough time, I crying mean, out loud, I time. act on this show. I'm not a SAG. I don't got a SAG card. You got a saggy something else, but that's not look, true. Wrestlers need to get it together, and I know it's going to be even tougher now for WWE because you have agents that are trying to put people in different things while still not trying to deal with the union it's, it's a very unique situation so i don't know if we're ever going to see one i don't think we're ever going to see one but to be honest wrestlers need to do some sort of collective bargaining i think with each other with these bigger companies and really need to make sure that they have something planned for their future not just medical when they can get it now or the hope that they'll be taken care of if they go back and you know the kindness look wwe's done a lot of surgeries a lot of rehab for people AEW probably the same way so it's got to be a better way. Back in a moment, Observer Live. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. First says, why are the bottoms of wrestling boots smooth with no tread? Well, first off, what do you need tread for in a flat wrestling ring? You do not. And second off, you ever get booted in the face with tread? Well, that would suck. But getting ask, booted ask in the face G. with a Dolan. flat book, yeah, exactly. <laughs> flat boot to the face when it actually, you know, you're not supposed to really boot the guy, but it happens here and there. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get... boots were made of potatoes, weren't they? I don't want to get kicked in the face with a, a treaded boot. I want to get kicked in the face with a really smooth, flat, wide boot. Because it will hurt the least when that happens. Let's see what else we Plus, got. People, have you seen some of those rings from back in the day that, like, barely, I mean, those boots catch the the top of the mat and everything? It just, it's a mess. Pulling up the canvas and whatnot. Presents, considering the heat he is getting and they are giving him wins, do you think Vince would be crazy enough to book Dominic, getting the Money in the Bank briefcase, and then the unthinkable happening? Well, listen, Dominic ain't beating Roman Reigns. No. Could Dominic win Money in the Bank? Yes. And as they made abundantly clear... And actually have done before. He doesn't need to challenge for the WWE World or Universal or whatever. He could challenge for the U.S. title, the oh, uh, Intercontinental title. And it doesn't need to be for another year. So, yeah, I could see them putting money in the bank on Dominic. I mean, Remember that with Caval, low-key, where it's like he's going to cash in, and he cashed in for, like, I don't know what it was, the Cruiserweight title, the U.S. title, whatever it was. It's like, what a waste. Come on now. You can't cash it in on anything other than the world title, especially if it's Dominic. All right, everybody, want to wrap it up for today. Hey, enjoy talking to all of you here today. And Monday is going to be the beginning of a new era where you must sign up to watch this show on video. 
and, uh, and it's going to be much better. Trust me on this. Trust me. When you go to the chats on Monday, it's going to be miles better than it has been. So uh, hopefully we have some of you join us for that. And uh, if not, we'll see you around the bend. Wrestling Observer Live.